Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another oilfoodbasics.com video blog. Today we're going to be talking about vapor recovery, specifically as normal in the upstream oil and gas sector. So we'll be diving into that in just a minute. Just wanted to thank you again for visiting our channel and watching this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, especially if you want to see more casual videos like this describing basic components and parts and workings of our oil and gas industry. And if you have any topics that you'd like to see covered and you think I would, might be able to cover it, please drop it in the comments below. And if not, hopefully I can find somebody who would know about it and we can either get them onto the podcast or elsewise. So also be sure to check that out. We have a podcast. It's the oilfoodbasics.com Discover Podcast. You can find it on your favorite podcasting app. We always we interview someone from, uh, we'll interview a bunch of people from a variety of, of positions across our industry who tell us about what they do and uh, what their specialty is and help share their knowledge with the rest of us. So check that out too, guys. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so as we first start talking about this, I want you to think about a Coke or a can of pop, soda, Diet Coke, whatever you call it, that. <laughs> we're gonna take that and we're gonna open it, right? So you're gonna change the pressure. So it's under pressure, right, in the can. You go to open it, it you know, what happens is some of the gas that's actually in the solution, it's all liquid in the can, you open it, it comes out, lower pressure so you get the gas coming out, okay? So what's happening is a phase change. So this all comes back to phase behavior. So we witness it in many different scenarios in our own day-to-day -day lives. This is the very same case with hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbon under a certain pressure and a certain temperature can be found in different phases than at other pressures and temperatures, okay? So we're gonna dive into the world of phase behavior for just a second, it might get scary. We're gonna back out pretty quick, so stay with me. <laughs> we're gonna draw a phase diagram, okay? So we're gonna have pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. There's increasing temperature and increasing pressure in their respective directions. And what happens is we've got what we call a phase envelope. It's gonna be different based off of the, comp the components or the um, what the hydrocarbons are made of, okay? So whether it's a light oil or heavy oil or condensate, right? It's gonna be different depending on what compounds, the components, what it's made of, right? So with that in mind, when you have something at a high pressure but a low temperature, we're gonna, that's gonna be in the liquid phase. When you've got something at a lower pressure and maybe a slightly higher temperature, it's gonna be in the gas phase. And again, this can look different. Sometimes it's super skinny, sometimes it's even fatter, right? It just depends on what it's made of, okay? Well, now let's talk about typical well site setup for producing hydrocarbons, okay? So you're gonna start at your wellhead. So this is all relevant, it'll all make sense here in just a second. You have a wellhead, you're gonna go into your separator, and then your separator is gonna separate, typically, let's, let's say this is a three phase, it's pretty common, your gases, are going to, this is your gas, is gonna be sent into your sales line. And now you got two different liquids to deal with. You've got oil and water. Let's say this is your oil. Your oil is gonna to go to tank, and let's say your water is also gonna to go to a tank, okay? Now, this all has different pressures on it, right? These tanks, basically cannot hold pressure, okay? You cannot even have one PSI on these tanks, only ounces will literally explode the tank, okay? Just, that, anyways, that's matter of fact. Most production tanks, okay? So those are at zero PSI. Separator, let's say for fun, okay, let's start with the sales. The sales, the gas sales, let's say is 250 PSI. Let's say your separator is 350 PSI. And let's say your wellhead is doing pretty good. You got 800 PSI on your wellhead. All right. The whole time it's changing pressure, right? So you have in your separator, you're separating out the gases and the liquids, right? At 350 PSI. So as soon as you take this oil, typically it's oil, you'll have this a little bit with water, but primarily your oil or your condensate, whatever you're dealing with. Once you take that, the hydrocarbon, the liquid hydrocarbon, from 350 PSI or whatever the separator pressure is, it could be 80, right? It could be whatever. Whenever you take that and go to a lower pressure, here's what's gonna happen. At that point, let's say it's all liquid, right? It's right in here. You're dumping it to the tanks. It's not gonna change pressure or temperature much. It shouldn't change much at all. You're going down here. Now you're in the phase envelope 
where this is all different mixtures, different percentages of, of liquids versus gas. But what's happened is now you've got some gas that's gonna come out of that solution. So anytime you take hydrocarbons, liquid hydrocarbons from a high pressure to low pressure, you are gonna get flash gas, okay? That's the vapor that we're talking about in vapor recovery. All right, so let's draw this out. You've got your separator, and from your separator, your liquids are going to go into your tank, okay? So your liquids are gonna come in, and once you get into that low pressure environment, your gases are gonna come out of solution, and they're gonna raise the top of the tank. So what we got is basically a gathering line, okay? And that's going to go to either a combustor or a flare or a VRU or a vapor recovery unit. Okay, so this video is about the latter of that. Okay, but depending on your regulatory environment, your, your, who you're under, and how much you can flare and emit, maybe economically it's better to literally just get rid of the gas. Okay, sometimes if you got a lot of volume or if your regulatory environment won't let you flare or combust, get, literally destroy the vapors then you have to recover them, okay? So what that's gonna, ha how that's gonna work, again, it goes into that gathering line, goes into what we call a VRU, which is literally just a compressor, okay? So that compressor is gonna take this vapor gas at basically no pressure, and it's gonna pressure it up to the gas sales line pressure, okay? So it's gonna pressure that up. It might have to have a couple of stages, maybe you can't do it all in one stage, it depends on the pressure difference, but it's gonna send it to the gas sales, okay? gas sales, all right? Some companies will run a vapor recovery tower or a low pressure tower, whatever you wanna call it, but basically, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of gas, if you're dealing with a lot of flash gas happening, maybe it's not best to let it all come off and come out of solution in the tank, right? Because it's at risk, you don't wanna explode the tank. You don't wanna actually have enough pressure on it that it'll literally burst the tank. Explode might not be the right word for that. So what they'll do is sometimes you'll see this low pressure tower, and then we'll have to use green again. This low pressure tower standing in front of the tank and the liquids are gonna go into that, okay? And then this is typically gonna be held at let's say three to 15 PSI. So that's a whole lot lower than your separator pressure. Um, not quite to the tank pressure, right? So you're gonna get most of your flash gas is gonna come out in this, okay? And this is a vessel that can take pressure. You're also gonna have lines coming off of it going to, so the gas is gonna rise up. The gas is gonna rise up to the top of the tower and go to your VRU and your liquids, of course, they're gonna dump into your tanks, okay? Through whatever mechanism, however the tower is set up. Okay, so this is basically, whenever we're talking about vapor recovery, this is what we're dealing with. One other thing too, sometimes you'll see companies have, whenever you're talking about the separator, Sometimes they've got a high pressure side of the separator and a low pressure side of the separator, okay? And it's all to achieve the same result of getting that, the liquid hydrocarbon, the condensate, the oil, whatever you're dealing with, at a lower pressure, so you're gonna get that flash gas to come off there, okay, as opposed to your tanks. Sometimes they'll, they'll have a high-low pressure separator here, so that's just two, two different stages um, of a separator. Um, and then sometimes they'll still use the VRT, the uh, low pressure tower, sometimes they don't. Again, this is, can all very much vary depending on how much you're recovering and what your regulatory entity is and their view on the low pressure gas. So hopefully this has helped out. I know there, there's probably a lot more that could be mentioned, but again, just on a very fundamental level, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Be sure to subscribe.